Hello, everyone, and welcome to TV Guide Presents The Rise of Black Superheroes. First up, we have culture journalist, content creator, and influencer in the geek space, Karima Horn, aka The Blurred Girl. Welcome, Karima. Hi, thanks for having me. Next up, she's a writer producer on a number of shows, including Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. Please welcome Aida Kroll. Hi, guys. Nice to be here. Good to meet you. This next panelist is an actress slash stunt woman who's won two SAG Awards for her work on Marvel's Black Panther and Avengers Endgame. A big hello to Carrie Burnham. Thank you so much. So honored to be here with such a lovely panel and TV guide. (laughs) (laughs) And finally, we have an Emmy Award winning director and producer whose incredible work includes Black Lightning, Raising Dion, Luke Cage, and so many more. Please welcome Nima Barnett. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. The reason we're here today is because Black women are really finally showing up in the superhero space in a way we haven't seen them before. Like, we're getting Black Panther with Adora Milaje that just just made you feel so proud to be a Black woman. We have our new Batwoman is um, Javicia Leslie and just so much great representation in the superhero space right now. Why do you think um, we've seen this push in in recent years? I just think that Marvel just, um, when Disney acquired them and they started to do their film run, it was so successful. And it it started to blast open the space in filmed, filmed entertainment, just on film and then in television. So, you know, they have such a massive catalog of an incredible characters. And once you started to get into the X-Men, of course, you have Storm over there. Um, when you get into the Avengers, you're going to have Black Panther. So it's just, it's, it's part and parcel of the Marvel domination that we started to see, you know, Black superheroes getting that shine because they're part of these massive worlds. You know, just because I've worked in the Marvel space on television too, when Marvel decided to do their uh, Netflix deal, you know, we got Luke Cage and they wanted to do these street level New York characters and, and Luke Cage was definitely one of those. So it started to, to break out and, and allow Black characters to be seen. And I feel like the next frontier that we're just starting to see and we're talking about in this panel is black female superhero characters. Um, You have these powerful black male characters that I adore, um, but but now it's time for black women to get their shine on. And I'm I'm so excited to be a part of that. From a fan perspective, I honestly think that black fans have been saying for a minute, like we're trying to see ourselves represented in all forms of entertainment. And it was happening on the comic book side and in fantasy and in, fan- and in uh, um, fantasy fiction and genre entertainment, horror, even before that. And so I thought, think it was just a natural extension that those comic book movies started to also include Black characters. Black Panther was like a long time coming. Definitely also in terms of the fans on social media, Black women run it. Like <laughs> black Twitter is run by black women. So the moment, you know, if anybody tunes into Lovecraft Country on Sundays, you will see a whole bunch of black women. Again, genre entertainment. Um, same thing happened with Watchmen. Same thing happened with a lot of the other shows we're talking about. So when it comes to black women actually helping to promote these things, literally just by watching and talking about them on social media, it's about time they made some characters that we can actually relate to. I totally agree. And, you know, having the opportunity to work with Aida on Luke Cage, I just have to mention how important it is to have Black women, which Aida is a hero behind the scenes, too. And I was just honored to work with Aida because together we were allowed to, I mean, she really worked, you know, Misty Knight in Luke Cage and gave her a platform that was worthy of a Black female superhero, you know, and even with Alfie, an anti-hero, who wasn't what you call a superhero, her character was balanced as well. And I think a lot had to do with Cheryl, but a lot had to do with Aida having a black vo- female voice behind the lens, you know? And I, when I looked it up, it was like so many black female superheroes in comic books, you know? In comic books, intelligent, and I made a list, but we don't have time to go through it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to check that list. You know, I was like, 
these sisters are the bomb, you know, or how, whatever you young people call it now. And I think that the rise with culture, with how the Trayvon Martin case and all of these things are becoming more at the forefront of news, it is driving media entertainment to see a different story on screen. So I think that it's beautiful. Now we have more white allies and other people that are willing to band with us to bring these stories to life because they're, they've always been there. I've read black comic books growing up. I just never saw black characters on screen. Going back to Aida and Nima, um, bringing these specifically black characters on screen in a project like Luke Cage, which was just black be black, let's just put it out there. What were some of the challenges that came with trying to write these specifically black characters and make sure that what you present is authentic to not only yourself, but the audience you're presenting it to? It starts in the writer's room. You have to, you have to choose those writers well and, and make sure you put together a diverse room, but a room that can really bring um, depth, complexity to the Black experience from so many different sides. So we, we had that. We had you know, men, we had women, we had um, you know, gender nonconforming folks, we had people of different sexual orientations. We, just, we had age discrepancy. We had, we had as much diversity as we could muster in that room and so the perspectives were you know so different and i'm i'm canadian from the caribbean so it's like we had we had so many different like locations geographically all of that and that meant that we just saw the world in um in so many different ways that were all black you're working with studio and network partners and you have to communicate a vision you have to be able to play that game of like you know, getting these people on your side, but at the same time, sometimes the things that you're saying, they don't relate to you, they don't understand, and you have to find a way to say, even if you don't understand this or know about this, you have to trust us. Nima can speak to directorially, you know, and basically bringing her vision and insisting on it from prep all the way through post-production. But I just remember one moment where we had this church scene and, um, you know, we really, Nima was like, okay, so we're in here, we've got, it's at Harlem church, you know, it's, it's, it's densely occupied, we need fans. We'd already maxed out the budget and they didn't want to give us these fans. And Nima was like, we need these fans. <laughs> we need the fans and they need to look a certain way. It's hot in there, people are testifying, they need fans. That's what is what would happen. And we got the <laughs> we got the fans. It, it seems small, but like those little details make it more authentic. And and when we share it with the world, it absolutely matters because we want to please and um, represent black people. Like we want to be able to say, hey, this is for you. This is, you know, and, and so we absolutely have to fight for those types of things large and small once we're creating these, you know, these worlds. We all know about <clears throat> the stereotyping of how they want us to be versus how we really are. And that's the constant battle. Now you're elevating it and dealing with superheroes, okay? So now it becomes much more complex. So I have to commend Aida and the entire team on Luke Cage for navigating that, you know, in the best way. That's why I'm freelance, Aida, because I'd probably be in jail right now if I was in your position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Nima, we have to thank you because if you hadn't done what you did, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. So, you know, we have to, we, we also have to give you your flowers because you've been doing this and a lot of people don't realize how many things that you've worked on and how many things that you've made happen either. I, I did, I got my list over here too. <laughs> and I can honestly say that it, it seems like Black Panther was a cultural re reset for everybody. So for you, Karama, like, how do you think after that movie came down, how do you think that the superhero landscape changed for Black women specifically? I don't think it changed as much as it could have. And also, I don't want to, I don't want to be pessimistic. It's just, if you look at the history of filmmaking, and if you look at the history of TV in this country, years ago, people said the same thing about Spike Lee and John Singleton. Like, we've made it, we're here, Black folks, we're in Hollywood, we're getting all the things. And then all of a sudden, years after Boys in the Hood, Black folks weren't getting that work. It was sort of a 
It was almost like a flash in the pan. It was what was popular. I do feel that a lot of people wanted that Black Panther money. And so there was a lot of superhero talk and discussion. And I remember having conversations with people, friends of mine that write comics, friends of mine that write in the genre space. I'm like, if you have something that you were trying to pitch, pitch it now. Even if you pitched it two years ago, pitch it again. (laughs) I think that there's more people now this year looking at creating Black heroes and creating projects with Black characters in lead roles and that are well-written because of also the times that we're in. So I think it's an aggregate. I don't think it's one thing that did it. I think Black Panther helped prove that people who are not just Black will watch a superhero movie with a lead Black character in it. For the people who then were like, oh, well, you know, that was Black Panther. We were all waiting for that because of the Avengers. That same year, people forget Into the Spider-Verse dropped. And we have Miles Morales, who's an Afro-Latino character. So there are more and more characters that have been being explored. What I think we're going to see more of are shows like Watchmen, shows like Lovecraft Country, shows that take a comic book or a genre character and then extend it a little bit and make it very relatable. But I want to say that we're going to have a lot more of these shows. But at the same time, I want to see more shows with black women as superheroes and with black women directing them and writing them and doing the stunt work. Because here's the thing, even though it seems like we're getting a lot, there's a lot of shows and a lot of books and a lot of comics that have come out where we're on the cover, but behind the scenes, we have nothing to do with it. There's no reason why uh, more black women can't do this. I think what we have to stop doing is like waiting to get picked because we're not going to get picked. We should just do it. (laughs) I agree. I mean, I think in giving Ava as an example, as also, like I did to me, one of our Black female superheroes behind the scenes, Ava, along with Sandra Rhimes, along with Debbie Allen, along with Mara Brock and Keel, you know, um, along with Yvette Bowser, there's so many people that you can name behind the scenes who are Black female superheroes who are creating these things, you know, and it's funny you mentioned, Abel, because when I was producing director of Queen Sugar season one, Victoria Mahoney, and now Victoria went on to direct second unit of Star Wars. First, yeah, you know, first woman to ever do so. Ever do it. And when I watched uh, Lovecraft Country Sunday night, she directed that episode. So, you know, <laughs> Ava is a game changer. You know, she's a diamond finder. And because of her, I think now in season four or five, I can't remember, but there's about, you know, an army of about 45 women of color who now are in the Directors Guild and working. Those of us that are lucky enough to, you know, make it through the door and make it through all the slings and arrows that it takes to be able to get to some kind of gatekeeping level where you can actually employ other people, that we have to do it. Like what Ava did, it was, it was absolutely groundbreaking. It's like you said, we can be on the cover, but if we're not writing show running, directing, even, you know, production design, costume design, world building. If we're not in there, we cannot make those crucial decisions that say, this is what it means. This is what's authentic. And even hair and makeup. Exactly. There's no reason for Idris to look like that for three movies, hair and makeup. (laughs) i'm sorry i loved his character in thor but please put the helmet back on that wasn't necessary (laughs) you're right right, you're right you have a point there Um, for those who have been in this industry for a very long time like how do you get past those barriers because all it does take is one chance that one yes to get your foot in the door so how do we create that opportunity for more people across the different industries? There's a few things. It's like, one is awareness. There's, there's a lack of awareness in, a lot of times in our communities where you know something can be shooting in your neighborhood, but you don't know how to plug into it. Like you don't, you don't know what you don't know. I've personally had PAs come through just by talking to people that were in a neighborhood where I was shooting. They end up PAing um, on our sets. They wouldn't have known unless they'd come forward and just said, hey, what's happening here? Oh, how can I be part of it? Those those bold kids, it's like, I I take my hat off to them because it it takes that, but we also have to do a better, you know, a better job of 
of letting our communities know like these are jobs that you can do and and this is you know this is a path you know how either like you said somebody came on set like i was that bold girl like when i first came to la i was hustling sets i mean i see all i said on the corner of hollywood street and i would look for the stunt coordinator i look for the producer i introduce myself i talk like you know let them know a little bit about me and that's how i ended up getting some jobs like i ended up getting swat from that way i hustled the set talked to Charlie Brewer and he's like, do you act as well? And I was like, yeah, they sent me an audition that requires stunts and acting and boom, my name was showing and I was on an episode of SWAT. I talked to like so many people hit me up on social media all the time about like the world of stunts and just like Hollywood in general because they don't know. And like, how can I get my stuff together with writing? How can I push this and that? And I think you're right. There needs to be programs designed specifically for us and our people in order to really educate and push forward. As we push further for progress, not just behind the scenes, but on screen, where do you see the superhero landscape um, shifting or changing or going in the next even two years? I know that's hard to predict the future, but like, where do you see it going and where do you want to see it go? I better see a storm movie, a solo storm movie. I'm going to riot. I'm tired. I'm tired of saying this. I'm tired of asking for it. There, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm very, very, very tired of people like, go, well, I think, you know, she could be in Black Panther. That's cute. Storm should have been had her own movie. Everybody wants that Marvel, that MCU. Everybody wants that MCU money, right? So I think, I don't think it's going to slow down. And I think it's very clear that there are tons of characters of color out there that could be created that could lead these shows that don't need to just be just in the background and i also know there's tons of content so i don't think it's going to slow down i i'm not sure if everything is going to go to the big screen people have seen so a lot of money being made during you know the pandemic with things being streamed so i think there's going to be a lot of things that go to the small screen go to streaming services go to vod video on demand um, but all in that superhero genre space. Agreed. That's what I'm seeing in terms of the stuff that I'm fielding and the stuff that I'm working on. And we're really catering to a global audience is, is what's happening next. It's like now, and, and Black Panther was a part of that, you know, just we can go everywhere. We can, we can be viable um, all over the planet. And so with streaming and with these very very successful franchises like we're talking to the world now and we're going to see um more content that is location agnostic that it's it's about the authentic characters going through what they go through but it's not you know just focused on an american or north american market with the world being ancillary it's like you know we believe we're we have faith in this material that, that it can travel worldwide yeah, and for the longest time, Africa, the continent as a whole, has been seen as this other thing, this big mystery and sort of a monolith. And now as we start, start to dive deeper into the continent and into the cultures that are coming out of this um, once mysterious land, um, how do you think that will affect the way that we view Africa and, and, and as Black people, our connection to the motherland? I think like when I was working on Black Panther, I had that in mind that this is going to change the way that Black people see themselves, not only as African Americans, but as Africans and be okay with calling it. You're right. Whenever you watch TV, it was like seeing Black rice and donate $2, all the kids are starving, this, that, and the next. They never talked about the minerals, the oils, the natural resources that were available, the kings, queens, and how people do have king they, they they do have kings queens and princes and all that stuff there that's a thing and people are beautiful oh my god so i think like black panther just touched the surface of people changing their mindset and transforming how they thought of africa but i think it's just the tip of the iceberg i think there's so much more to come gina by by the wood is um she's directing a movie that's coming up and it's based on the dohemian warriors but it's also based on like africa in general and i think like that movie and I know a couple other movies in production right now that I think it's really gonna start shaping and changing the way that we appreciate our history, our culture. I don't think people realize there's a huge comic book market in Africa right now already. It's not new. 
Uh-huh. So's animation. There's a lot of stuff that's um, all of the big movies, Marvel, DC, all of them. When they have, when they animate, in order to get hit those deadlines, they send scenes all over the world including Africa. So I don't think people realize that there's animation studios, there's black manga studios, there's two black manga companies in this country and there's a black anime studio that's actually in Japan. We're everywhere, we've been everywhere. So it's sort of like, I think people need to kind of catch up with that part. We don't need to go, we're there. I use it right, it's a world market. And it's always been, you know, and I think the facade of you know, our films don't sell abroad. Well, there have been many films that decoded that myth. And of course, Black Panther is probably number first, probably number one on the list, you know? That's a myth that they, they can't put to us anymore. That's gone. You know, we make money, our films make money uh, with black skin all over the world. So it's exciting. It's an exciting time. And with so many comic characters that are available, Yes. Um, and especially black women characters, yes. who are you like most excited or most rooting for to see get their own TV show, movie, just major project out there? I I'm mean, gonna say Storm again, but no. <laughs> 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 but I do have another one, but go ahead, Aida. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I have to agree. Like she's, you know, kind of my, my spirit character. I, I've, I've loved that character since I was a child. And, you know, that's the first, comic character that I really latched onto and and kind of drew me into that superhero world. So it's it's so far beyond time for that character to get her flowers, get her own movie. The actor that they choose to portray her also needs to feel like she comes from Africa. Like I, I just think that that's, we also need to see a storm that looks like storm like her background and I don't know that we've had that yet. There's a character, uh, Marsha Washington, Martha yes! Washington, that I think is <laughs> so... They ain't ready. They ain't ready for her. They ain't ready for Martha. I'm ready for her on, on, um, on, on the small screen. I think that there's a great ongoing story to be told about that character, you know, who's, who's navigating um, American post a second civil war it's a it's a great character a great storyline so i'd love to see that for people listening who don't know who that is look up martha washington frank miller oh, exactly. yes thank you i'm i'm actually looking forward to um what lawrence fishburne is going to do with moon girl and devil dinosaur because mm-hmm. little black girls need comic books too yep. and they need their superhero movies too and i i when i heard that he was adapting that marvel comic into a, sh- a show, I was like, I was excited. So I'm excited to see that character um, because that's actually in development. And I think the other one I'm excited um, that I want to see, again, I don't think they're ready. Top-, Top Cow had a comic years ago written by uh, Mark Bernardin and one other gentleman whose name I'm forgetting, I'm sorry, um, but it was called Genius. And Genius was about a little black girl, a teenager, who happened to be a literally a genius, a tactical genius, mm-hmm. to the point that she basically seceded her four block radius in, in LA in Compton from mm-hmm. the union. She got the gangs and every all gangs, all these different people of different backgrounds to come together to secede from the United States because of police brutality and everything like that. Now, eight years ago, I was like, I don't know if they would ever make this. Now. Oh boy, I would love to see that one. Yeah. And it was really f- f- fascinating how it worked because everywhere she went, no one paid any attention to her because they just thought she was just, you know, just another black girl, you know, in the hood. And she was brilliant. She was absolutely brilliant. And the, and the book is written really well. I th- uh, the first one was amazing. The second one was pretty good, but I think it could be easily adapted. In fact, Mark Bernard, who's one of the writers, is actually also running for TV now. So... Maybe we get him some money, he'll do it. (laughs) Who knows? Fingers crossed. I will copy. I actually just got a copy of that book, Genius, and I saw it. She's from South Central, hood girl, but banging girl. Yes. I would love to see that. I would also, and I'm putting my bids in first for this, is I would love to see a black Wolverine because I'm a Wolverine fan since I was very little and I had claws coming out my fist, you know. (laughs) So I would love that. I'm a huge fan of Hugh Jackman. I love what he does and he's incredible. But I mean, I feel like 
there could easily be a black Wolverine. Why not make it a black girl? Why and not? The Weapon X program was all over. Sure. The Weapon X program, they don't know how many people they injected. Why not? Exactly. I got injected. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, let's bring that to life, please, somebody. I'm just going to keep putting it out there. <laughs> they have a Lady Death Strike. They can have a black oh, woman. Heck yeah, they can. Thank they you. They absolutely can. 